everybody, welcome back. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to show you how to finish up the fun house and we're going to wrap up our carnival. And next week, we'll finish up the entire thing. So stick around for part two of the carnival build. All right, gang, uh, let's get right back into it. So uh, I recently purchased myself a Proxon hot wire cutter and I, I can't recommend them enough. I broke down these uh, pieces of XPS foam to a rather uh, thin state and uh, never really quite could get it this straight, this thin before. Um, and you notice I have a bootleg um, Shifting Lands Guider Pro. I made it myself, it's out of MDF. It's, it's nowhere near as good a quality, but it, it works for now until I can get one. Um, just to help me cut these pieces as straight as possible. And I modified the, uh, the guider slightly so that the wire would go through so I could run it at an angle. And here I'm just cutting some stuff very thin, running multiple pieces at once in order to bang these out as quickly as possible. Making the shingles like this is probably the easiest thing I've done so far on this build. And it was very simple to accomplish just cutting two pieces of foam taped together at the same time. You can create a lot of them all at once. And uh, then you just proceed to glue them on. It didn't take very long at all. It was a little tight in some spots. I originally started off using up some gray paint that I had. Uh, I didn't want to waste it. So I ended up mixing it with uh, some Mod Podge in order to lay on the base layer for laying down the tiles. And then when I ran out, I just uh, switched to uh, PVA glue. Yeah, you'll notice some toothpicks sticking up here out of the top of the building that I installed in the previous video, and I'm going to install a few more here in a second. They're, um, they, they ended up not fitting what I needed, and I saw something else online that I really liked that I wanted to try, and that was using the, um, the sewing mesh to make kind of a gothic-style fencing, and I ended up going with that instead, which I thought worked much better than... Um, the toothpicks did. So I ended up scrapping the toothpicks, pulling those out entirely and doing that instead. And here I'm just cutting up some balsa dowels, some square balsa dowels to make some details to go around the outside of the building. I ended up making quite a few of these in different sizes. These ones are kind of longer. And then the next set you'll see that I make is they're, they're very short on the top. Uh, you'll You'll understand uh, in a few when they all start getting put on the side of the building.
shit happens. I used hot glue for a lot of this project, but this is one of the few places where I felt super glue was more suited to this. I think super glue with this wood works really well in most situations. If I were going to perhaps glue this to the inside of something, I would instead use super glue, but since it was uh, fascia material stuff, you know, stuff I'm gonna put on the fascia of the house, I figured it needed to look as decent as it could. These, these worked out perfectly, so no, no arguments here. This was uh, something I'd seen done uh, several times on other channels. Some, they decided to take uh, some wall putty, in this case, uh, joint compound or drywall mud, and um, add a little bit, just a little bit of water to it to make it a little bit smoother, and use it to fill in the gaps on the, the walls of the house for kind of a stucco effect. And man, this was what the technique I, I got to use this more often it dried quickly with the help of a hair dryer um, I stippled it with a brush to give it a little bit of bit texture but man it's just there's so many uses for that kind of that material that non uh, typical craft material I love having that stuff around and just being able to try a new technique like that was uh, was worth it after all I'm just scraping away some of the excess joint compound with my knife
now I use my trusty pin vise to drill a couple of holes in the edges of these overhangs so that I can hang some lights from them. Bake lights, but lights. I got these little pins from Michaels. They got um, eyelets on one end and a straight piece of wire on the other end. You can cut them to pretty much any length you want, and these were perfect for sticking in here. Uh, just to hit them with a little bit of super glue and then stick them in the hole. And I tried my hand at painting up some small lanterns. I didn't really like how these came out. I used them anyway, but um, I, f I feel like I need to practice a little bit more at painting things that are on fire. And I'm going to take some of my uh, jump rings and link them together to make some chain to hang the lanterns from. Special shout out to DM Mama on Instagram for her post on making uh, like gothic style fencing using uh, her, uh, sewing cloth here, this um, sewing grating. Some, uh, something you use for needlework, we call it uh, granny grating. But first, more details.
attached the granny grating to the roof, uh, the fencing to the roof using just some shallow channels that I had dug out. And you'll notice here I'm just using some super glue to do that. That ended up being a mistake because that ended up melting the foam in certain spots. I should have just used hot glue after cutting the channels out. Um, but consider that a lesson learned. It still came out looking okay, but it, you can tell if you look up close. So the technique for the granny grating is to just remove tiny sections of it to make it look more uh, like a fence. So you can see I just did an alternating pattern of one, two, one, two, one, two, and just had it, uh, you know, centered on the uh, each segment of fence. So if the center piece wouldn't line up with that pattern, I just left it. So you can see in the far pieces how that ended up uh, have the effect that, that ended up having. <laughs> Next I'm going to cover all of the foam in Mod Podge. Time to make some stairs. So I cut a, a small section out of the second floor uh, roof so that, or sorry, the second floor floor so that I could have stairs come up from the bottom or at least give the illusion of that. So that when you lift the top up, you can see a staircase going up and then when you put the top back down, you see a staircase going down. And I just made these out of foam. <laughs> I did the inside for good measure. There'd be nothing like looking inside this thing and seeing like a white wall from behind. So I decided to just paint all the interior black. I could have painted it like an off-white or even done the stucco effect on the inside, but this is plenty good enough. I didn't need to add anything to this to make it uh, cover up the, the white walls. <laughs>
Next I mixed up a lighter gray. I took some uh, some granite gray and a light gray and mixed them together because the granite gray is a little bit more of a white without being white, uh, but still had that grayish bluish tone. So I ended up taking that to, pay, to do a uh, base coat on the stucco, which ended up drying really light and um, actually went back over it later with a, a brown wash to darken it up a little bit and bring out some of that uh, texture. Um, and you'll see, you'll see the painting process, how this goes, but it, you'll really like it. And I end up painting the stone a slightly darker gray, and I keep darkening the gray as I go with the different uh, objects that I'm painting here, you'll notice. I use the same color for the stone that I use for the, uh, the, the wood on the roof and the wood on the porch to give it that old, uh, weathered, really, really old weathered look. I paint my floors and my uh, other interior wood pieces a uh, dark burnt umber, like uh, to simulate old planks, but planks that haven't been exposed to outside weather. Next I give everything, the wood, the stone, and the lighter wood, all the same dry brushing of a uh, suede. I dry brushed some, uh, lightly dry brushed some black from the bottom of the foundation up to make it look, uh, to give it a little bit more of a shadow effect, which worked brilliantly and I do it again in a heartbeat. Now all of my wood is going to get a coat of a very dark uh, bluish gray and that's um, kind of like an older style, it's like a, more to look like a faded black than anything else. But I've, I've noticed a lot of houses from this time period had this effect, especially after they had sat around for a few years. Excuse me, a lot of houses in this style from the Victorian time period. But this is really more of an amalgamation of the medieval uh, fantasy and Victorian. So I'm not really sure what this style would be because it's it's more modeled on the Victorian house than a medieval cottage for sure. But it's not exactly either. And on to the second floor, and this is how I preferred to do it: working from the bottom up uh, to make sure that I didn't miss anything, so I didn't miss any dry brushing, any paint spots, and um, this work largely to my advantage. Yes,
again, everything just getting that dry brushing of uh, Craft Smart suede color. I'm going to go over my shingles with, uh, with some uh, flat black, uh, very watered down because it, it gives it more of a matte finish when it dries. And I was looking for something a little, that looked a little bit more dry, so it would take, when it took a dry brush it wouldn't be as pronounced, like it wouldn't be as satiny, um, and it would be very flat. We're going to hit the uh, outside um, stucco areas, the gray stucco areas, with a uh, Army Painter uh, Strong Tone. And this this made everything pop and start looking really nice. And it, it granted, it covered up my gray tone, but I didn't care once I saw the result. I was really in love with how it looked, so I just left it. I tend to go for a more grim dark look anyway, and this was very starting to look very cartoon fantasy to me, so I wanted to uh, darken it up quite a bit. You'll notice a door on the front of this building. As mentioned in the previous video, I have made this uh, for another project that I had just laying around. I do this kind of stuff quite a lot with uh, little pieces I'll be bored, or I'll have a concept that won't work for another piece, and I'll just hang on to it. And this door was something I was working on, another technique, I, I several techniques for making doors. My, one of my earliest videos of how to make solid doors uh, featured none of what I used here, so I wanted to show off a different way to make a door, which I'll do at some point in the future. I'll show you how I actually made this door, but for now, just uh, safe to say I had one laying around is what I used, and uh, it looked great on the fa uh, facade of the house, so it's definitely good to keep and hang on to old pieces. And we're revisiting the uh, lanterns that I hooked up earlier with the rings. And this is when we're going to hang them to the front of the house. And after the wash dried on the stucco, I felt it was just a little too dark, so I went back over that with some of that Craft Smart suede as well, and that was exactly what it needed to make it look how I wanted. And ladies and gentlemen, here's our finished product. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, this brings us to the end of our Cursed Carnival, the longest running series on the channel so far. 
I could keep it going, I think, forever, though there's more pieces I could have made. I've left it a little open-ended, uh, so I can add more in the future, possibly. Uh, that being said, if you'd like to contribute to the gar carnival, you can add your own photos or your own pictures of terrain that you've made that have a carnival or circus theme. You can post them on the community section of my Patreon page if you're a patron. Also, you could use the hashtag the Dungeon Master on Twitter and Instagram, and I'll see those posts and you can share them with me that way. Ultimately, if you have your own platform and you'd like me to see something, leave a comment below. Um, next week, we'll wrap up and talk about uh, using the carnival on the table. And I'll let you inside the fun house, and you'll get a fantastic view from the top of a gigantic rotating wheel. You can spin around endlessly on poorly fashioned equines, meet the carnival master, hear the litany of the damned, and perhaps a palm reading from Mr. Sevelin. Uh, pay for tickets like a responsible carnival goer. If you like what I'm doing, uh, check out my Patreon, and uh, over there I post behind the scenes content and all that kind of stuff. Otherwise, um, you hit me up on Instagram, again, the, the Dungeon Master, or Twitter, the same handle. Uh, actually, TD Master on Twitter, and that's a lot of rambling. Check out my merch over on Amazon if you like another way to support the channel. Don't forget to like, uh, puppy. Don't forget to leave a like, uh, leave a comment, and subscribe below. I've been your Dungeon Master. See you next time. Bye for now.